Hi everyone and welcome to the MCERC YouTube channel, Ocean Smarts and Whale Farts. Today we are doing a whack-a-mole discussion and you may notice it is just me right now. That will change. Uh, I am your host for these events as I am usually host for most of the YouTube stuff that we do here. But I also want to take a second to quickly apologize that this is a late post. Usually we try to post these every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time for the United States and everyone's been really busy so we're just a little behind in trying to catch up. Our own Dr. Mackay was on a vacation so things were just kind of crazy and we're getting back into things so sorry about the delay. But today the reason why I'm here by myself introducing this is because it's going to be a kind of covert whack-a-mole discussion. And what's really cool about this is you get to be kind of a fly in the wall of what our usual meetings are like. We will have Dr. Mackay, myself, another research assistant, Annabelle, and I believe our intern, Iris De La Cruz, will also be with us. But Melissa isn't feeling well, so she won't be here today. And our meeting that we were going to talk about, they all think that we're in a meeting and we're going to go over grants and talk about the process of that. So as Dr. Mackay was on her trip, she assigned us all with the task of trying to find a grant to fund our own research projects. And so we've kind of been navigating that on our own before having her come in and kind of guide us through the process just to kind of get our toes wet and see what it's like. And boy, is it a process, but you will yeah, just hear us have a natural discussion about what we did the past week and um, don't stress. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So is there anything I should know about in general that you guys are stressing over besides that you couldn't fill in pieces of the gram? Um, no, I think we all generally have the same questions and the same things that we were stressing mm -hmm. about, like um, between I, I don't know how much on Melissa's end she was stressing about, but between the three of us, it sounded like we were over analyzing all of the an the grants that we found to the point where we were like, at this point, if we keep over analyzing this, we're never going to write for one. Um, and that's that thought because we're going to get to grants in a minute. Outside yeah. of grants, Iris, I can see it in your face. So what is it? Oh, I, my week has just been crazy. It, it's always crazy. So I just. Okay? Right. Yeah, I have three sick dogs. <laughs> My car broke down. Ooh. And I'm still not sleeping. Well, it's it's getting fixed. But it's it's a my life. Oh, <laughs> something's always up. Now I'm just used to it. I just know when it's too calm, it's I know something's coming. So <laughs> I put out there that I mean, life is full of challenges. And, and I know it feels like every corner you turn sometimes just kind of kicks you a little bit here and there. Um, that's why doing fun things are super important. So if you need a deep breath or for us to support you more, you need to let us know. If this is piling on, this is something that is one more thing, then you need to let us know. If this is something that's fun or you can say, you know what? life is piling on me, can I do this? Cause this is fun. Then, then you need to, you need to tell all of us because your support system's there, right? You, you girls always talk to each other a lot. So that's it. But if you need to switch gears for a little bit and we did it over the summer, we can do it again. Okay. No, I, I think I'm fine. I just, this is just my norm. <laughs> Something's always happening. So I just, Good, dude. Just let it happen. Well, if it's any consolation, it's ever um, like yeah. rats, apartment, you know. <laughs> it just is. So you're not alone. But it, let us know if there's anything we can do. Okay. Don't let this okay. pop on to everything else because this is something we can change. And okay. you work hard. So I do not, I don't want you to feel like I'm going to think anything less of you. I know that you know, Sierra and Annabelle and Melissa would say the same thing. We know how much you put into this stuff. So don't be shy and, you know, just bring it up. We can always talk about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
one more thing. This is supposed to be fun. If even if it's work, it's supposed to be fun, right? Yeah. How about you, Sierra? How are you doing? I'm doing good. I yeah, I feel like things are going very well for me. So yeah, I feel almost kind of like you, <laughs> Iris. Like something bad's gonna happen soon. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully I've gotten all the cruddy things out of the way. But uh, yeah, I actually get to go visit back home and like a couple weeks. And then I just got that teaching position for a winter science camp at our local discovery center. So oh, I mean, nice. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Things are good. So deserve yeah. it. I'm excited for you. <laughs> thank you. But. Okay. So, um, 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 I want to meet with you guys individually. Sierra and I met today. Sierra's mm -hmm. going to be doing the website, like massively invested many, many hours between now and the time her next you know, her new job um, gets interjected into the picture. So she's going to be asking all of you for bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, some of what she's doing on the, you know, a lot of the websites built, but, you know, I did it and she's going to polish it. You know me, I want every color in there and I want every picture we own in there because it's just too cool not to share. So, so we're going to let Sierra kind of run with that. Um, some of the things she'll be putting short blurbs in until she decides whether or not we should expand on it. So for example, Annabelle, your name came up today mm -hmm. uh, about maybe giving her a very short blurb on what the manatee project is that you're working on. I actually made a PowerPoint and a short video that I was planning to put into the website and I don't think it ever got into Sierra's hands. So I can send you those after this. Yes. <laughs> um, and we can edit it or change it up, you know, do what we want with them. So, yeah. And Iris, um, I didn't even think about this till now because I was just going to mention how your, you know, your Spanish as a first language is going to help out so much in the other stuff. But I bet Sierra would really appreciate some of that. So if she taps into you guys, she'll let you know. And Sierra, I know I'm talking for you. You don't need me to, but she'll let you know if she just needs short blurbs because she's trying to put all the content in there. So it, at least it's complete for everybody to see what we're doing. And then you might want to say, Sierra, I want to put more of my project in there. Or she might say, hey, we need a little bit more. But Iris, I've already told her too that you know about all the people stuff. So anyway, she's going to need us to really kind of interrupt. But it'll be short bursts of interruptions until she gets all the good stuff up. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then... <clears throat> excuse me so Sierra will be doing that it's a paid position um Annabelle mm -hmm. with the humpback whale catalog we need to jump on that I want to talk yeah. about uh some of that being paid as well because mm -hmm. all of you are approaching points where you should get paid Iris you're a little bit um behind in the timeline before you do that but I want to keep you fully involved because you're not that far behind from also getting paid for some of the stuff that you do. So we do wanna have those individual talks like we usually do in our meetings. I just thought since y'all have the same questions on grants, we would do that. So without getting into very specific grants, Annabelle, Melissa said that you can kind of give me the rundown on where the snags were. And then I would like to hear each one of you. I don't need the name of the grant. I just kind of want, it's about this much money. I have to get it in by this date, um, you know, yeah. general stuff. That way, whatever I answer works for all of you. Does that work for you, ladies? Yeah, that's right fine. In. Um, I don't know too much about how far Melissa is in the process um, because I know she had a crazy week and we just weren't able to touch base on those things. Um, I did end up sending Iris a grant that I found that I thought would be helpful for her and just kind of giving her an idea to create like a different spin on it. And I mean, she can go into detail um, about that with you, but the grant I found was, I don't know, I wouldn't say it was like, I guess about like $20,000, but I found on Inside Philanthropy, they didn't have um, necessarily like a closing deadline for applications, but what they wanted was a letter of inquiry first and then I think it's, you know, you go from there once they respond to your letter, but it's like, that's the first absolute requirement that you have to send in to them. Okay, so how do you all find inside philanthropy since we're just testing? And by the way, remember, as far as the size of the grants, 
the idea is to get you guys paid at the level, you know, the transition you're making between being 100% mentored and, and right. employees. I, I was telling Sierra today, I'd like the four of you, nothing would make me happier and the board of directors happier than you superstars becoming permanent employees. I think you you would be a really good fit if that's what you want. So $20,000 is, you know, something like that. You're right. It's a small grant for the company, but it's not a small grant to get you paid or yeah. something that might help fund projects that you're doing and maybe pieces of that go to, you know, the other RAs, you know, putting it all into a pool or getting equipment. Right. That are- yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm hoping that, and, and fully expect that the amount of of money that you guys pull in will largely go to getting you guys paid salaries, whether it goes in our account for that purpose down the road or whatever. So um, you need a letter to start with. Mm-hmm. And what needs what's the content of the letter supposed to be? Um, it's it's basically a letter of I don't know. A proposal, but it's, I mean, they said no more than two pages. So I wrote just a letter explaining, you know, who I am, where I'm working, what our organization does, um, the project that we want to gain funding for, and just what the funding would go towards and how that fits into their goals. Like, you know, as a, someone who's like funding these organizations. So I tried to make it fit as much as possible based on what they wanted. Um, And I think I did an okay job, but I'm more worried that I didn't budget enough or went over budget. So I feel like some things need to be like moved around, you know? Yeah. So did you research the company? I didn't do too much research on it, honestly. And I feel like I, that should definitely be the next step that I do. Um, But I just read as much as possible on the inside philanthropy page to make sure that I was you know, just including all the components on it. Okay, and have you tried to do a search for other projects they've funded already? Yeah, one of them was actually, um, I forget what exactly it was called, but they had funded one environmental conservation project that I think involved sea otters. Um, I know the organization said they normally fund smaller organizations that are based out of New York, but they said that if the project involves the environment or conservation, they'll fund projects outside of the New York area or even outside of the United States. Okay, that sounds good. And and you're doing this for, without getting into details about the actual project, the Manatee project that you're focusing on? I actually ended up doing it for the um, humpback whale app, the necropsy app. Well, you're tied to New York then is that they're part of the North Atlantic population and that those whales are actually up in that area. So you should really definitely. Yeah, that it would be a good thing to include. Um, Write that down. So what you're doing is kind of a pre-proposal, but it's even more brief and it's good to look at the full proposal and mimic what might be in the full proposal, only abbreviate it. Right. That's what the, I mean, the full proposal is what they're actually looking for, right? Mm-hmm. And then, and then um, do what you do when you interview people, you know, the change from when you were interviewed to when you interview people. So put yourselves in their shoes and definitely take a look at what other projects they've done. Mm-hmm. If, if they all have a common word, conservation, then you know that that's their focus. If they all have a common word education, you know that's their focus. You know what I mean? Try to see if you can identify really what kind of projects rock their world. Yeah. I mean, I think I will have to narrow it down. Yeah. They did um, include a page where you can look at their IRS documents to see like which, you know, where their funds have gone. Um, but I'll definitely have to narrow it down to the environmental conservation projects that they funded because they also do fund a lot of other, you know, sectors of, I think like, you know, reproductive rights and, and things like that, so. Okay, so remember to all of you, when you write these grants, you wanna pick one thing that's mm-hmm. actually deliverable. 
That's the key. So most of these have a timeline. So they'll fund you for X amount and they want some kind of a, a report, whether it's a letter or whatever, at, in a specific amount of time after you finish. So if they fund you, and, and you should always apply for the funding they are offering, don't apply for less. So what you can do is show a bigger budget, but ask for funding for one specific thing in your bigger budget. Mm -hmm. That's all. But I'll help you with the budget. So don't worry about that. Well, the budget part that you all have to do is actually make a budget for what you're asking them to fund by making a list of everything you can think of that you're going to need from soup to nuts. Okay. So that includes a license for a program or yeah. cards for a camera, whatever. It's going to be a hard drive to store stuff on. Um, so, I mean, all the little things, batteries for a paper recorder, whatever it is. Um, but they, but you want to pick one thing and you want to make sure it's deliverable. So in the Humpback Whale catalog, you know, citizen science might be a good angle for that because it's doable. You know, you're going to get photos, you know, you can get other people to participate. Um, you can stretch that out to New York and, and put that project that we already have going for different regions and create a page for that area for mm -hmm scientists to and I don't think there's another group doing that yet so you should look on that so we don't step on anybody's toes to do but um but that would be a really good thing to do because it's con citizen scientists directly participate in conservation right so that would be a good thing to do um and the budget's not going to be a huge budget but see how you know is it was the grant an institutional grant or was it meant for a person um I think it's an institutional grant, but hold, I can actually read the... Don't know. Don't read no. the... You and I will go over it together. We don't have the time. But what I'm getting... Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't towards individuals. It was, it was like, you know, they'll fund smaller, like, grassroots organizations or nonprofits, like that kind that of thing. would probably qualify for that because... Right, line, yeah. So that, that makes it really easy. But um, do take a look and see in their application how much they allow for salary. Okay. Uh, then we can include some salaries in there. It'll probably be not a big piece of it, something like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'll be zero. So, you know, they'll say we'll fund things, but we won't fund salary. And then we can talk about how that works. Yeah, I know there's a lot of grants that I ended up flipping through that said that they won't fund people to go to like conferences or publishing fees or anything like that. This one didn't mention that. So, I mean, I did include it in my budget, but um, I know some of them are like picky about that. We also have what we can include is called indirect costs. So um, whenever funding happens for an organization, there's a certain amount of money that, for example, MCERC will, will have to invest in order to submit a grant or to make the project happen. Anything from hiring you guys to um, insurance and, and all those kinds of things. So what happens is if you submit a grant, we include, and that's overhead that the Coastal Center has for the grant. Overhead can include your salary. So you and I will have to figure one-to-one. -one. So you need to go look and see, do they allow indirect? Because some smaller grants won't. Right. Um, and whether or not they allow salaries and those kinds of things are really important. So all of you will need to do that. Um, it also allows us to not, you know, you don't want to ask an organization that's giving you money to pay a big chunk to salaries. They don't want to do that. They want to save whales. They want to get people involved and excited about conservation, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so something doable for you, I'm, I'm just throwing this out there, Annabelle, yeah, just for mm -hmm. example, might be creating the page, um, having our website expanded to a section, you can talk to Sierra about this, that includes your project. And then maybe you can include what it costs to hire somebody to put that in there. In this case, it would be Sierra, right? Um, so you just need to know what it is, but figure out what they're really interested in and go from there. Right. 
Okay. And then anything for all of you, anything that you tripped over, because I got notes from all of you on this, I think, that has to do with MCERC's organizational information, I'll fill that in. Don't worry about that. You're not going to know a tax number or, or any of those kinds of financial things. You're not supposed to. Um, as far as our official documents, the website is going to have, and already does, but Sierra's going to update our official documents that you may not recognize whenever you read a, a website, but you, I bet you notice they always have their mission statement. And so those are things that the IRS wants to see from us on our website and sort of funding organizations, because that tells them that we really have set up the foundation stuff to be who we are and do what we do. Mm -hmm. But I have that stuff. So don't worry about that stuff. Worry about the meat. What are you writing for? What can you deliver? How much time do you have to deliver it? And write your budget. Did you, did you want us at any point to send you the rough draft that we came up with to look over? Or did you want to save that for? Put it in OneDrive. Okay, OneDrive. Yeah, put it in OneDrive. Because when we meet one-on-one, -on -one, we'll go through it. Right. But remember, keep it very focused. Also, this is one of those times that you write in English. You know, you write for a, remember I told you at one point that after a while you start talking like this, you don't realize people, you, you think what you're saying is like really elementary because we all talk about it and people read it and say, I don't know what this means. So that your, I always tell people your, your audience is like 14 years old because you won't write for a 14 year old. You'll write for an adult, but you think that you're writing for a 14 year old. Mm -hmm. That would be simple. And if we need to elevate it, we can do that afterwards. Don't write for scientists. Okay. I mean, if you were applying to National Science Foundation, yeah, right. Yeah. It's just we, hard because I think I took too many like technical writing classes in college and it's like they drill that into your head and I finally figured it out and now I can't like get out of it, you know? I know. And, and that was the hard part of the publication that you're writing, right? Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's why you got me. That's why we're doing this together. Yeah. Um, if you already knew this, you would need to, to learn how to do this. So that's, that's all good. Um, yeah. It's, it's a really weird phenomenon that we, teach you as undergrads how to write at this level at college level until you don't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's okay. But yeah, go back and, and remember the first version gets vomited out, right? Cause if you try to write, it'll never happen. Okay. Anything else on yours I should touch base with before you and I meet one-on-one? -on -one? Um, I think that's about it. Um, unless I read back over it and come up with more questions, but I already left some comments for myself in there. So I can just put bubbles in and, and upload it to OneDrive. So you need to do more homework. That's your first thing. Yeah. But not like to do your homework on. Mm -hmm. And then schedule an appointment with me. We can try for tomorrow afternoon. I have something in the morning that um, may, you know, I'm starting in something new. So it may cause me to okay. feel good tomorrow afternoon. Um, but if you want to try for tomorrow afternoon, we, we can. Other than that, next week, I was looking. Beginning uh, of the week? Yeah, Wednesday is pretty booked up. Uh, okay. I'm doing a Nepris talk, one of the ones I see here. I think you've seen Nepris because I think you've looked at But it's one of those things that I volunteer to do for school groups and give, you know, when they request somebody. So yeah. I'm doing Wednesday and I'm speaking to I'm doing one of the second interviews that you guys did for somebody who might come on in your group and then oh um 2 p.m my time on Wednesday there's a zoom meeting for people in Scotland that want to learn fluke matching so if you guys want to pop in on that if you're available feel free to do that it's up to you um Annabelle, you might well actually you all probably like that but it's up to you totally Okay. okay, Iris, talk to me. Okay, what have you found and where are you stuck? And not specifics, just like. Yeah. Um, I'm just so lost. I guess, like Annabelle said, we all feel that way. Um, I spent hours just high, hyper focused, too much on find, yeah. finding like the perfect one that I think I could 
do. Um, but I feel like I don't know enough of all the projects that are going on. Um, so I decided on um, education. No, yeah, like uh, outreach and stuff like that um, for underprivileged children, minorities, low income families. Um, so I feel like we can really use that aspect to pull some heartstrings. Yeah. And I gave Iris the idea. I thought this could, could help yeah. in education if she did, if she focused on maybe a group of like young university students that might be um, first generation college students and trying to get them, trying to get funding for them to come to the center and get a chance to like design their own research and or project. So I think that that could be a good angle on that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm speak that just a little bit. Go ahead, Iris. Yeah. No, yeah. And um, I'm glad she did say something because I was like, I had no idea what to write about. So I was like, what can I do? Um, but I think I was focusing on elementary age to maybe high school age students um, because I came up on a, a how, I can't, how do I explain this? Like, it's harder for kids from lower income families to succeed and go for higher education. So I was like, maybe we can like use that angle to like encourage these kids to like, yeah, look, science is cool. This is what you can do with science. You can continue education. I, I love it. So, so let me just offer this up. Um, this is not, I'm gonna just preface this Iris by saying this is not my cultural experience. So I'm gonna count on you to stop if I go on a tangent that's either um, inaccurate or inappropriate. I'm gonna to totally take this from um, a 59 year old white woman who's traveled a lot and likes to pay attention to behaviors. And I, I will not be insulted or offended if you need to correct me because this isn't my experience, but I love, Annabelle's idea. And, and I think because this whole thing is relatively new to you, you know, being with our group for a time, like you said, you don't have the foundation that the, uh, the other ladies have only because you started later. But you're always comfortable when we talk about the fact that you speak Spanish. And a colleague of mine in the lab said something to me one time that never dawned on me before, which was, we were talking about um, past mm -hmm. laws that went through that or for, um, I, I, I'm drawing a blank with the term, but you guys will know, and I should, when, you know, preferences given to people to kind of balance the, the demographics, help me with it. What's that? So what's like a very thing? Like, like percentages? Yeah, well, there's a word for it, but anyway, you know what I mean? You apply to college and mm -hmm. you have to have so many people. Um, oh, like, yeah, to, yeah. like look good. Well, yeah, but it's yeah. really meant to balance out the demographics, right? Mm -hmm. and, and at the time that he and I were talking about this, so this is probably 10 years ago or more, it's still relevant that what he said to me, because he's um, Mexican, he was born in Mexico, mm -hmm. his kid's a first-generation Mexican-American, and he's my age. And what he said was that the reason that those, oh, what is the name of that program? Anyway, the reason that those kind of things are so important is kids in grade school that come from places where English is a second language, that it's not that they can't learn, it's that they're always behind because they're trying to catch up with the language barrier. And so having those kinds of programs where you give them an edge, you're not really giving anybody an edge, you're just kind of balancing out what would have happened if if uh, all things were equal with language. So, mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, the reason I say that is because I wonder if Annabelle's project with citizen science could use separately, but together, a project with citizen science for, um, I don't know if it would be high school kids, you tell me, because this was your experience, Hi, although you're mm -hmm. fluent in English, you have been for a very long time, you know, forever, I think mm. pretty much, but who could benefit the most from some support and, and Spanish as a first language? I wish we could do every language. 
we have you. If we have yeah, somebody, and if one of you guys speaking other language, I don't know about. Let me know. But should we? Should you mm. target high school kids that could use the confidence by actually doing this program, or should you target university kids that are trying to catch up? My sense is that maybe high school kids mm. might benefit most from that. What do you think? Um, I was actually bouncing that around my head, um, yesterday and it's so hard because I'm like, okay, what was my experience? And I was, um, like, I, I just always wanted to shoot for higher. Um, so even in elementary school, like I, I was like joining like chess and little programs after school. Um, then middle school, I joined like, yeah, or took a class for like called AVID where, they taught you about colleges and how to apply and stuff like that. And then after that, I actually had to apply to a Bryant Collegiate High School, which is a, a dual credit high school. Um, so like, I know it's different because I see my brothers and they weren't as, they're like, they didn't really care about school. But um, I, I think maybe high school students might benefit a little bit more just because that push because they're at that barrier where like, well, because like my brother, he doesn't know if he wants to go to college or join the Navy or just work with, you know, whoever. So I feel like just giving that support and that push and like showing you like, hey, this is, it's not just about education. Like this is and stuff. I'm really lucky to know that I've always wanted to work in ocean stuff, so. Yeah, just everybody's experience is very different. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to explain it. No, I get it. So here's, here's my thought from being totally on the outside. But maybe it'll be helpful. No matter what, you should target all STEM curriculum so that whatever you design and you apply for, you write it from the point of view that you're supporting science, technology, um, engineering, and math. Mm. Not a hard thing yeah. to do because you can even um do app stuff which mm -hmm. we need to do anyway so so there's that math we have some projects that involve math right now and not anything that's above the high school level and if somebody's yeah. not confident in math then maybe there'd be some support there for okay how do you mm -hmm. because you know your learning experience now is very different than high school and college right? um and then so I would think about that spin on it figure out whether or not you want to do something totally different mm -hmm. and you can do it in the context of one of the projects we already have going um you can have some of these students work with you to write the spanish posts but have them write in both spanish and english because that could be really um they're going to be i i honestly am so busy that trying to figure out how to stay active on social media and support sierra is not one of my favorite things because I don't have the time, but I try. Um, but that could be really helpful because that generation, even over your generation, is so much better at that. Maybe they could produce TikTok videos about some of this stuff. You know? Yeah. And you get find out what interests are. Should it be? I mean, how many times of Schoolhouse Rock is probably not something you guys are as familiar with. But how many times Perfect. have you guys? Like professors that do rap videos for their class for you to memorize the periodic table or something. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love that stuff, right? So, but, and you wouldn't be the one doing it. You would be the one advertising. Okay, I need a group of students from maybe from New York or wherever where English is a second language. That's a big, and you'll know the difference where I wouldn't, right? To mm -hmm. do and write the grant for this. You know, how many people are you gonna include? Make it manageable. You don't need that many, so make it manageable. What was the amount of the grant you looked at? Um, I think lowest was 20 or 25,000 to 75,000. Go for the 75,000. Okay. Um, it's gonna take more work. What was the deadline? February 1st, I think. Okay, so you're gonna have to hustle, but I think you can do this, and I think I think you would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So write this 
I, I suggest this. I'm not going to tell you what to do. This is my suggestion. First of all, research company, all the things we just talked about with Annabelle. See who okay. they are already. Look for a pattern. Okay. But it would be cool if you could do STEM curriculum and advertise. So that costs money. That'll have to be in your budget. Advertise mm -hmm. for X amount of high school kids where English is a second language. And the, the goal is to produce social media content in, that has music involved. So maybe you'll get lucky and some of these kids will already be singing or you're going to interview them too, right? Okay. So you're going to want to have them, maybe you could have them give you a sample of what they want to do. Okay. It doesn't have to be great, but it has, you know, you'll have to look for those things you did when you interviewed people to be an intern, right? Um, you can include the process of having them interview because that's in and write your grant up as an educational experience to do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, covering STEM curriculum. So they will have to put in their social media videos and they're going to have to create it to include STEM curriculum, but you and, and other faculty and staff at MCERC will mentor them on the STEM curriculum they need in order to do that. And they will be doing it in two languages, a minimum of two languages. Now, you're okay. welcome to more than Spanish if you want to. That might be okay. a bigger bite than you can chew, but mm -hmm. maybe you'll want to advertise for five kids that speak English and their second language is something different. So at the end, you produce one or more videos in five different languages. Okay. I would call it a pilot program. Like actually word it as a pilot program. And okay. what's your goal? Your goal is to get high school students to tap into their culture in a positive way, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, improve their STEM curriculum to make them more competitive when they apply to college, you, you get the picture, right? You yeah. know, mm -hmm. I do. So, um, and whether or not you want to do it, focusing on the humpback whale project, Annabelle, that would give you something else to write about by saying you're doing this in conjunction. Right. Like they, maybe they could talk about, maybe they could write the social media contact, uh, content about the humpback whale project. Mm -hmm. Not what the STEM okay. curriculum is related to it. That kid, and I would go for, you know, maybe you want to go for New York kids. Totally up to you. Or maybe you want to go to the country, you know? So I don't know what the demographics are in New York, but we know that they're diverse. Mm -hmm. so maybe you want somebody from New York, somebody from Texas, somebody from Florida, you know, good you decide whether you want to stick to Spanish in your pilot study. You could say Spanish in your pilot study with a goal of taking this to the next step. And if it's a multi-year grant, then you can think about that. Too. But maybe the next step is to do other languages. Okay. Which might be a really good way to keep it simple, right? Mm -hmm. How long would your deliverables take? Well, you're going to take one topic. Oh, excuse me, I have a hiccup. So you take one topic and have them make, you know, maybe five videos. However many kids you have, I would suggest that each take a lead on a video. Okay. Right? But all work on the same video. So each one of them has a leadership skill and you'll interview them. That's part of, you know, your proposal. You'll okay. interview them to make sure that they can be mentored towards being a leader mm -hmm. and what that kind of stuff. And they're going to have to figure out each team member where they fit in. You know, you get the picture of how you're going with this. So the skills, mm -hmm. that's like when you guys interviewed, right? You had to tell me what you wanted out of it, but I had to make sure you were getting something out of it. So kind of, does that help you? Yeah, I have some ideas. Um, I was My thinking I'm, I'm, I'm actually still really, well, not good friends, but my, one of my teachers from high school is now the principal and um, we're friends on Facebook. And so he'll chime in every now and then. So maybe I can get some students 
from from the high school since they're dual credit um, at Blinn. Uh, maybe I can see if I can get a group going there or talk to him and and see if it's something we can work. You could get a group going there, but you have to tie in New York. Oh, okay. But but that you could get a group going there, and they might have to connect specifically with peers in New York. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, like How's- a pen pal kind of. No, they'll like maybe they'll be bringing in people to do the videos with them. Okay. So the idea is that you're reaching a bigger audience, and that would be your example. Mm-hmm. Um, and the cultural difference between Texas and New York, <laughs> you yeah. could bring some of that, right? And even the population. Yeah. As far as New York goes, I you know I all I know about really is a, a Puerto Rican mm-hmm. population, just because I Puerto Rico. I'm My, sure that that's um, what I boyfriend's sister-in-law is actually Puerto Rican so maybe I can talk to her and see um if they have family there or nephews or nieces I don't think you want to do the family connection with everything I think you I like the school connection in Mm -hmm. Texas but I think your your kids that you recruit into the program Mm -hmm. yeah how to reach the kids in New York okay you know because you're mentoring Mm -hmm. them not doing it for them you're mm-hmm. me in this case and they're okay. you you know what I mean so you're guiding mm-hmm. um, and you'll have obviously you'll have the support of everybody doing that mm-hmm. including for, for that but try to do an outline on this and keep it very focused the idea mm-hmm. is and then figure out what you're you know and remember start with the title because that'll narrow mm-hmm. it down for you right so the idea is stem curriculum and and kind of mm-hmm. helping to bridge that gap mm-hmm. and, and so the cultural angle and and what are the challenges you know maybe they can do the videos by looking at the citizen science project that annabelle gets and say mm-hmm. what are my challenges okay. why is it so hard for me when english is my second language you know mm-hmm. and, and you want kids that maybe came into high school later that they can say as I was learning English I'm so far behind him because it took me three years to even figure out what anybody's saying never mind learning the lesson so your videos don't have to be about the science they can be about what it took for them to learn about a humpback whale what it took for them to do you know to do those pieces so that the science is kind of secondary to how they're learning the science and the math okay. technology. Okay. And then um, I mean, I also have Texas A and M down the road. Um, I think the, the grant covers up to 21 years of age. So like incoming freshmen, I don't know if we can tie that in there as well or just stick to high school. You'll never be able to get this done. Remember when you write a grant, <laughs> write applications, right, Annabelle? Mm-hmm. You know, you've seen this specifically. You it's very, very, very narrow. Mm-hmm. So the pilot program, pick one thing, one very narrow, very deliverable thing, which means mm-hmm. if you know you decide what age you want to do and what group, where you feel the most benefit's going to come from, or where you think the most participation is going to come from. I suspect mm-hmm. high school seniors, but I don't know. What's my, um, and then you write the grant as this is a pilot program with a long range goal okay. of expanding to other demographics. Just... Okay. So yeah, I, I like the idea that we can get other people involved, but if you do that now, it's it's gonna be too much. For yeah. <laughs> okay. So do you okay. think of a title? What exactly do you want to do? Something super narrow. And, okay. and if none of that particularly works, you don't think it's gonna be fun, by all means shift. Right. it's kind of nice to have you go Texas to New York mm-hmm. work on humpback. There are no humpback wells in Texas. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to get to have an experience seeing humpback whale stuff mm-hmm. by working on a citizen, as a citizen scientist and talking about how are they going to get the kids in New York to want to do this? We're actually standing on, on the edge of the water. 
Yeah. I think that is a really good angle mm-hmm. because I feel like the, you know, like kids who normally grow up in New York don't have a, you know, a good sense of like the environment and the conservation because you're, you know, living in, you know, the city all the time. Yeah. Like my boyfriend's from the Bronx and everything he knows about animals is like from what I've told him. So that could definitely be something to tie into that. And you being, you know, from New Jersey, recently moving from New Jersey, you know, and spending all the time in New York too, that's a really, a really good mm-hmm. advantage for you to help Iris figure out yeah, what definitely. abilities are and Iris to help you say, wait a minute, Annabelle, you're doing all this stuff this way, targeting your citizen science project. None of this is in Spanish. So what's the percent population that you've just eliminated? Yeah. Right? So, and I was, part of your project is supposed to be getting some of this content on these pages in two languages. And so, and you need to, to be doing some of that. Um, but here's a way to kind of pull it all together. Something that's in your comfort zone because Annabelle's the one who's going to help you with the science part of it, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we know you're a good leader because what you do in the lab, we know that when you're in your comfort zone, you manage this stuff really well. So I think it taps into some of your best skills, but oh my God, you're a cultural goldmine for us to learn from. And and I think yeah. I'm kind of excited about the idea you might make some TikTok videos that I might <laughs> think so. Um, Give that some thought. Yeah. That works for you. Yeah. And um, okay. yeah, I'm smiling a little bit more. So I think maybe she feels like that your project's fleshed out her proposal a little bit. No. Uh, and um, I, I do want to kind of clarify that I'm, I don't kind of want to speak for other culture, like Puerto Ricans and other Hispanics. And so I'm, our cultures are very similar, but there are some other differences too. So I can't fully talk or explain their culture. Um, I do. They can, they do can explain that. So you're, mm-hmm. the, I mean, if I tried to do this, that kind of experience would be so very different. Mm-hmm. Trying to take in somebody from Cuba, somebody from Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. somebody from Central America, somebody from Mexico, mm-hmm. you know, or somebody from the States that grew up in a family that only spoke Spanish until they went to kindergarten. Mm-hmm. That's not unusual either, right? Yeah. So, so I'm glad you said that, but that's cool because when you bring in these high school kids, you can say, look, you're not going to pull one over on me because I, I, we have enough in common that I get it. <laughs> but at the right. same time, your TikTok, whatever you lead your TikTok on, you bring out your cultural experience. So if you're from Cuba, go for it. Feel free to do that. You're pulling in kids from all different cultures, but you all speak Spanish. Or, you know, Puerto Rican Spanish is so different than Mexican Spanish. <laughs> so, but maybe that should be part of the TikTok videos, right? So maybe mm-hmm. when they talk about Bajena uh, Horobara, mm-hmm. they don't quite say it that way. Maybe in a TikTok video, you know, sometimes you see things, it's always like hello and goodbye that go in the beginning of videos and all these different right. ways. Like, yeah, I can always see those kind of things fly. So maybe in this case, it'll be how many different ways can you see a whale? Well, okay, if you're from the United States, we measure in feet. If you're in Cuba, you measure this way. You know, mm-hmm. the United States is the only one that does English. We learned metric. Now I have to go backwards. Yeah. Those kind of things that, you know, I, I grew up in America, but I grew up in a place where everybody spoke Puerto Rican Spanish and I didn't learn mm-hmm. it all garden and now I speak Spanglish maybe that's what their TikTok video is about so that's kind of what I'm getting at but they are going to have to be challenged to talk about the technology you know okay I grew up in a place that uh, you know BFE Mexico how many apps are used how many smartphones do people have Mm -hmm. depends on how much money you had if you're Mexico City being way out right Mm -hmm. so they can talk about that kind of stuff and what was it like to learn the apps and they can show the citizen science stuff you know that that the apps are building like the manatee app Mm -hmm. right and so that's what 
you bring that in. And having them put it in the music, I I just think that would be okay. a blast. I know I'd want to watch it. <laughs> You'll be amazed, just like I am with you guys every day, what kids come up with. Yeah, you know, they're they're ahead of the, my time. Yeah, yeah, and just have them. T- you know, you're gonna have to figure out an interview. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want everybody to help you interview them, but have them have fun. Okay. Okay. Make sure you're gonna enjoy this when you write this. Okay. So keep yeah. it really comfortable for you. Okay. okay. I can do that. Bye. Sierra, what'd you find and where are you at with stuff? Um, so I have a huge just document of a whole bunch of different websites because I I told you earlier, yeah, I just went down a rabbit hole and like like Iris said too, trying to find the perfect one. And it's just been really hard to find ones that take unsolicited requests and ones that'll support what I'm even trying to do. And like the spins, I've still been trying to like think of spins too. And I got more ideas just in our discussion today, but, um, there are three that I'm looking at right now that I'm the most interested in. And they're like on a range of doing small grants. There's one that I even found that'll fund individuals. Um, and so those are like smaller grants. Um, I found one that is a little bit bigger, but it only covers like 15% of um, indirect things and overhead costs. And then there was a third that's their minimum is 50,000. So it would be kind of harder, but um, I've been looking to do spins for um, doing, we talked about before like community engagement. So maybe doing like little community service project things that are also kind of like a learning thing, either for kids or kind of underserved populations also, or just um, community awareness of conservation. And so that was another thing I was looking at. It was even trying to tie in the um, work in the Caribbean and tying that in with making that more public and getting people interested in the conservation aspect of it and making like a YouTube video and like doing education through that way. So it's just been, my brain's kind of all over the place (laughs) with a bunch of different things. So I feel a little bit more behind in the process than everybody, but. um, What's the most fun, what thing do you, that you do with MCERC that is the top of your list for being the most fun? Hmm. You can include the website think that might be it I'm just kind of want to help you highlight some um the most fun I think it's the smaller things like learning about walruses and making that video was a lot of fun and then the science experiment explaining the science experiments I really like um so it's doing research and then talking about it. That's what I really like. Okay, so doing research and talking about it. So the doing research part, let's see. Trying to think of that. I'm trying to recall some of the things that you've done. So the experiment with your brother was really cool. Um, Yeah, you liked talking about the walrus skull. So the interviews that we're doing with scientists and things like that are pretty cool. Do you prefer to talk about things I guess I, I want to find out what direction you like the most. Do you prefer to talk to scientists that already know stuff and learn something? Or do you prefer to know something and share it? I prefer to know something and share it. Okay. Because I feel like when I ask someone that knows everything, it kind of like puts me in a place where it's like, I don't even know what questions to ask. So it's kind of like, instead, if I go and I look at a topic and everything, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I like doing that when I know it better. Yeah, I agree. So, so there's a few things that you could look at. Um, anybody have an idea what Melissa's looking at at all? Um, I, I really have no idea, but I have a hunch it probably has something to do with photography and the humpback whale and necropsy stuff, which is kind of the angle I took as well. Um, but of course, you know, I can always end up scrapping the whole thing and 
going with a totally different thing. Well, I don't um, accept that. I think it works, but I think doing the doing all that and targeting the New York area still gives you yeah, you still works. Yeah, because yeah. the idea is to use the app to to get that data, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I can email her and see if she. I'll leave her alone. Okay. Yeah, I should probably leave her alone. Yeah, um, so, so Sierra, what I was kind of getting at is you like to learn. So, okay, this is going to be really funny, but it just makes me think of Jimmy Kimmel. So do you guys ever watch any of Jimmy Kimmel's like videos when he goes out on the street and he asks people questions? Okay. albeit he does it usually to make a fool out of people to see what they don't know, but he asks some questions about stuff. Like, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? I said, hey, not him. He's got somebody else. Okay. This is a generational thing. I know he's older than all of you guys. For some reason, I'm picturing Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, no, they always they, they will laugh. Because they always joke about how people mix the two of them up. <laughs> I I just can't picture Jimmy Kimmel's face in my head. Actually, no, I, I know who you're talking about. Never mind. I kind of stuff on like recordings, just in case somebody yeah. ever did that. Because I'm only kidding. It's it just like oh, we're gonna have Jimmy Kimmel someday watch this video down there and say, <sighs> "I'm old. I'm just old." Anyway, my point, Annabelle and Sierra and Iris, was that going out and interviewing people, you know, that's how you learn stuff about people, even if you're not doing, I mean, I'm not talking about doing the Jimmy Kimmel thing, like asking opinions about stuff, but but that's kind of what the Ask a Scientist started with, right? Mm -hmm. So so your angle about wanting to learn things, Sierra, as far as a project goes, it it might be something like okay who could you involve to go out and ask people things you know you interviewing people things but you're gonna want to tie this into content so do you want to do this in different languages do you you know what do you want your end product to be when you learn stuff and I know you like the small videos of people just going oh, that is so cool I never knew that right but maybe pick a common thread to that. What kind of stuff do you want people to, to be amazed by? Um, and go with that. And I, I don't know what interests you to do that because I know you like all the marine biology stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think trying to get funded to do content that's freely available to some audience is one thought. But here's the other piece I want to share with you that maybe you could think about. I'm finding when we're talking about doing the Scotland class that um, we're going to be teaching fluke matching to people. And actually, this might interest all of you, that these, this is a citizen science thing. There's a small group of people with a marine biology degree who I don't know if any of them have an advanced degree that's working on this. They go out, they take pictures, and they, they're building a catalog, grassroots. Annabelle, we may be talking to them how we're doing ours now because mm -hmm. Lindsay asked me about how we're doing ours because they're starting hers and I offered to, you know, told her what we were just starting and we may want to bring her in on that. Um, but the, the class that we're doing or that I'm doing for them is for citizen scientists to participate. One thing I keep hearing, Sierra, is people saying, I don't know that I'd be any good at this, but I want to. I want to do something to help. So you know, those might be the people that you target for getting involved. In other words, when you watch videos, maybe asking them and what they want to see and try to get funding for a project to draw in citizen scientists into science and think about doing that in the context of making videos with content. So you would go out and actually interview people whether you do it through social media, which is probably what you'll do, ask them what their favorite thing is, and then connect them to a scientist and have them watch a scientist show them something cool. And then you get to see what you want to see the most, but it's not just your reaction that way. Mm -hmm. There's two. Um, I would try to look at that because that's your favorite thing to do. What kind of series could you do that would share like, I mean, I love the look on your face when you saw that walrus skull. That was really cool. So, you know, if you can figure out what kind of things would do that for other people, 
what about the first time I showed you those pictures, the first time people heard a humpback whale sing? Mm-hmm. You know, that's the kind of stuff if you want people listening for the first time doing anything, you know, this is really cool. You might be able to set something like that up and just see what they think of it. Um, the benefit is, is what are you going to share? So what is what are your grants asking for? What do they want to fund? Um, I'll, the ones that I've been focusing on aren't relevant to that. It's more like, um, I don't know, I guess conservation and awareness and education in that aspect. What do you mean? So, what um, have I huh? what's an example of something they funded before? Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm still like in the very beginning, kind of haven't gotten that deep into them yet. Okay, so so do your homework. Yeah. Um, look at them again from a different angle. You know, I suspect they can, but you could put anything on the website or the YouTube channel. You might not want to just look at communication grants. You might want to look at grants for one of the projects in particular yeah. and then with it kind of the, the way we spun the other things but I suspect creating free education is probably going to be the best way to do that and you might be able to tie that into these two projects here or something Melissa's doing um, you might even be able to ask Joy whether or not she would be willing especially since it's New York, Annabelle, be able to teach, you know, some of these things on, on Zoom and, and kind of help. Maybe like it'll end with something like a necropsy or something like that. It's, it's hard for me to guide you without knowing what the grant is. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm really liking the idea of maybe getting adults really how many adults have said to you I know a lot of said to me I've always wanted to be a marine biologist you know what I mean like capturing that audience and I think you would be able to do that and it may be that you need to do something like what um, Iris is going to do where you assemble a team Mm -hmm. of adults to help you create some of this content Um, anyway Find, find the grant you want to apply for. Look at that one that you said was $75,000. Mm-hmm. Do some homework on that one. See what kind of stuff they've already funded. See if now that you know how to look at that, see if that, that ties into any ideas that you can put your finger yeah. on. If you still want to do videos and that kind of stuff, then a free educational content, but you don't have to pick a theme or one thing to do. Pilot study is also a good idea, right? If you want to do it, because we are an education 501c3 that does research and then touch base with me again um i think you might also be able to teach web skills and social media skills Mm -hmm. by getting a group of people to make content at the same time you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yeah and then they go out and interview people about stuff and they go out and find the scientists, even yeah. though you're mentoring them. And then you're giving a skill back to people who maybe could really use that skill um, in a way that's marketable for them. So what your target audience is may or may not be, you know, high school or adults to, to see how that works. You know, maybe you would want to do single parents. Something like, or maybe you would want to match. I love this one always. Grandparents with school kids. Could that be tied in with my potential kids? Like group them together? Yeah, it'd be really cool if Sierra did the grandparents and you did the high school kids and have the high school kids teach the grandparents how to rap. That, kind of, that would... You would cross generations of in- Iris. That's brilliant, actually. Yeah, good thinking. That look at you all smiled. <laughs> My grandpa's yeah. super active in the church too, so he's got a lot of older friends. 
Cross culture, so, but Annabelle, think about it. What do you think about like seeing grandparents with high school kids? And a high, I mean, you could video the high school kids, <laughs> you know, the bloopers, outtakes type thing. Oh my God, oh. that would be so much fun having them. Because first they're going to have to teach the science. <laughs> how to pronounce some of these scientific names. Then they're going to have to teach them the moves and maybe even, you know, maybe some of them would be Spanish speaking, but maybe not. So then you'd be sharing culture, right? gonna have to teach them how to use zoom and <laughs> yeah I mean I just taught my grandma how to use FaceTime because when she first started using it she would face her camera up towards the ceiling and she didn't realize that you're supposed to look at the phone you know yeah well, um, you so it's just funny. <laughs> right and and that I mean not only that would be entertaining <laughs> and you would have to interview them Sierra to get grandparents but you wouldn't have to limit the number of grandparents people like iris might choose to work with i don't know five kids is just off the top of my head i think is manageable to try to do five tiktok videos and have them each do it but if if they the five of them had you know five grandparents that made each tiktok video with them or i'm saying tiktok but maybe you'll have them do a tiktok and instagram and a facebook so that their friends can see it too or and whatever and sierra can guide the website part it would really meld everything together and it would be really fun if she had kids from texas and grandparents from new york <laughs> the new york accent alone annabelle would be hilarious mm -hmm. and, and they would then adopt the citizen science stuff right yeah which would be so you've just tied in all three projects, which would be super, super cool. It would be, and it would be, I would love to watch all of that content. I would like to watch from start to finish, have the kids, and they know how to video themselves, have the kids have the video, them teaching the grandparents. And they're going to be doing it from a distance. So they're going to have to do the um, duets, right? Are you surprised I know what this means? The duets? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the little side-by-side -side videos. Yeah, she knows because she's a media person. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah, no, I have no idea. Yeah, so yeah, like if, if a singer does or a dancer does yeah. or, and then somebody else does there beside it, right? So they mm -hmm. would have to film it that way in order to make this work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which, you know, technology-wise, Sierra, that would be your ballpark to help them figure out the technology mm -hmm. to do that and the marketability on the editing, right? That would be part of, you would be doing that, but that would be part of your project to fund mm -hmm. so that you could create the content that will bridge the cultural and the age gaps and the, the actually geographic gaps too. And as a pilot program to work with this on supporting the science and supporting the cultural, you know, program that Iris is doing, you know, I mean, that could be fun because then we can do phase two, right? And you guys can do it again and it would be really a yeah. lot of fun. I think it'd be really a lot of fun. And you're really supporting people getting involved in conservation, actually making a difference, right? Um, you teach people how to be involved. You're even making them aware that our projects are out there. Mm -hmm. So that Annabelle gets people on board to see that stuff. And, and at the same time, you can pick the next demographic and you're giving people confidence. The grandparents' confidence in technology and being part of science, the kids confident that they can bridge the gap, right? And step into their own world and do that. I think that's kind of exciting. And that's just me. I have planted all this and I have led you in a direction, mm -hmm. not let's go in this direction. Um, it feels like you guys like, like this and hopefully whatever Melissa's doing fits in as well. So that would be a good thing, but I'm not trying to pigeonhole you if this, if you decide this isn't what you want to do, that's fine. So you have to write budgets. Sierra, your budget's going to be largely based on the time it's going to take and whatever you need to edit. It'll be written for MCERC to purchase those things. So you would have the license for that, but it would that means long term those things would be. You always want to give more people more bang for the buck, right? Mm -hmm. So you use it on this project but mcrc will be able to use it on all the type of stuff blah 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 so your budget's going to be time technology web space electronic space distribution um 
all those kind of things you need to reach the biggest audience and get the best quality. Yeah. You might have to purchase microphones for in your grant for Iris or Iris, you might want to purchase microphones in your budget or both. Mm -hmm. Annabelle, again, your budget's going to depend on how you go with this, but mm -hmm. you're going to want a lot of advertising and, um, and technology involved in this too, developing the app, you know, all that kind of stuff. So better? Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? I think I have you a lot to think about. Do <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? Or Me? No, I was like, I can't think of anything. I have a lot of information floating in here that I will probably forget later. Well, um, <laughs> I, I asked uh, Sierra to record this just for that reason. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we okay. can all look back at it. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll be recording probably a lot of these. You guys are like really stepping up. <clears throat> Go back and look at it again. Um, oh, I, I do have a quick question. It's about grants, but not these grants. Um, when I was talking to Annabelle about, um, oh, yeah, you should like, like look at all these grants that we found. Um, but I don't think that folder is shared with uh, Melissa or Annabelle. Um, is it? Is that just for me and Sierra right now? Well, because you are organizing the spreadsheet mm -hmm. and I want everybody to cross over. So when we meet again, one-to-one, -one, remind me, one of you to share that with everybody. Okay. Okay. And, yeah, because you guys are going to need to put that stuff in there anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you done? organizing everything that was in there are you still in the middle of all that um every i think um so there's so many folks i went on down a rabbit hole <laughs> i get so distracted so easily okay. um <laughs> so i keep finding well not keep but i found one excel sheet and like very deep in the folders so i took that out and put it in um so now i'm going through all the folders and there's folders within folders so I'm just like going through all of them to make sure I got all of the Excel sheets. Um, but as far as I've gotten, everything is in one Excel sheet. Um, I haven't gone through fully and to make sure that some grants are still active or not. Um, I think that's my next step. And then going through and taking out grants. Yeah, you learned a lot doing that, didn't you? Yeah. Did, yeah, but you did as far as resources. So that's that's great. Um, Annabelle, any questions that you want to bring up on anything that we haven't um, talked about? I feel like at the beginning of this, I had a question about something that wasn't grant related, and now I can't remember. How's it um, going with the Humpback Whale Program? It'll come to me. What'd you say? How's it going with the Humpback Whale Program? You ready to have a one on one meeting and get that? Um, yeah, I do still have some sorting out to do with some of the images and I'm trying to, cause I know Iris sent me some more dog pictures this morning. Um, so I shoved them in there and I got to like, just rearrange stuff, but I'm having a trouble, I'm having trouble with like the fold, like the organization of the folders, because what I was hoping was I could do folders and subfolders in this program. And it's looking more like you have to import folders like one at a time and you can't necessarily like stack them inside of each other. Remember when I showed um, the original, the program we're using now, right? Which is yeah. on how we had one folder that had the one to three main images of the fluke. Right, yeah. We had another place that had the folder with all the images in it. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have a folder inside of a folder. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I made separate folders and I made a good way to label them so that I knew what was in them. And this is just using the dog picture, so it's just practicing. But um, yeah, I'm probably going to go back over it in the morning and try to just organize it a little bit more. I want to do that because if we're going to do it anyway with whales, I can help you. Right. But what about the tags and all that kind of stuff for the purpose of searching? Yeah, the tags are, that. that's the best feature I think that it has because you can add like as many tags as you want and then just search like I or spots or whatever, or both of those things. And then it'll, you know, limit the amount of pictures. What about metadata? Does it automatically import all the metadata? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, so it should have under the one sh Iris sent me, 
it should have the metadata for, I guess your cell phone. Um, and then, yeah, it shows it for mine. So it shows the GPS too. And then the other, yeah. And then the other thing we have to do is see how many fields can, can we add a field across the board? In other words, can we put, um, what do I want to say, like group number? Yeah, that I'm, I'm not sure. I think that would have to go into like the naming of the folder, but I can explore it a little more and see if there's a different way to do it. The reason I ask you that is because if we, I want to put associations there. So if we see right. this whale with this whale, I want a field that says we saw, you know, other whales together, other whales, this whale's that with them, put a field for that across the board. Mm -hmm. I would be able to create a place for that because I would think everybody would want something customized like that. But yeah. if, you, if we can add fields. Okay, that's cool. And as far as the publication goes, I'm waiting for Melissa to add that piece before I go back and edit it. The like, body composition? Yeah. Okay. Don't, let's, I don't want to talk details on this recording too much, but um, yeah, to have her just put that one piece in there and then I can go back and edit it so that we can finish that publication up because have you written the conclusion? You have, right? Yeah, you have. Yeah, I wrote um, a draft of the discussion. I don't know if we ever went through it. Yeah, but I will when she okay, gets yeah. it because I can't. Yeah, I can't. it's in there though. And then we'll give it to Joy after I edit it to add her part to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sierra, you're going to go through the website so you should be good. Is there anything else you have questions on? Okay, and then Iris and Annabelle, you're going to try to post more on our pages because humpback whales are about to appear in those areas and manatee are about to come in. So it doesn't have to be anything long. And Iris, you can go back and find old postings and translate okay. them and just start them with, look, you know, whales are coming down, manatee are coming in, get your cameras ready. This is what you do. And you can go back. There should be notes in them that says, a post or, or something, some document in each one of those sites that explain mm -hmm. um, that we don't own the photos, but that they give us permission to use them and have them be mm -hmm. part of the MCERC catalog. And yeah. that they're going to be happy will with all that stuff. So that could be translated. I mean, and I did post, um, I posted something on the pages that just was like introducing ourselves and you know, that we were transitioning into the project. Um, so did you want us to post something else that said, like encouraging people to send those photos to us? Well, post them and let them know what's going on. I mean, okay. excitement, but let them know that what they do is relevant. So, right. hey, you know, wills are coming down. This is, you know, we're looking in the Caribbean, any cetaceans, which are whale, dolphins, and porpoises, and keep them short. You know, don't make these long posts and put a nice photo with it. If you need photos, let me know. Um, and, and just, you, you need, and I think Sierra is probably going to explain this better than me, but you need activity on these pages to get people to watch them. Yeah. I have been posting everything that not even specific to, and I don't know if you've noticed, but it's not necessarily specific to whales on the humpback whale posts and manatee on those, just ocean stuff to keep them active. I share stuff on there. So, but that should be things you guys are doing and not me. I don't mind continuing to do that, but you guys are keeping them busy because that is going to benefit all your projects. Mm -hmm. right? and, because, and as soon as people start posting pictures there to share, it'll be your job, Annabelle, to submit them to Happy Will. Neil and I will talk about numbering and things because I want to make sure we don't duplicate numbers, but submit them to Happy Will and then they'll get matched or we'll know if it's a new individual and put them in our catalog, but then let people know. Some of them will be repeat sightings. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's a big deal. So you guys, th there's two of you. You guys keep an eye on those pages for when other people post. You're admin, so I think you'll see. And I, you might even okay. have to approve when other people post so that we don't get spam on it. Mm -hmm. So you should get notifications. When, when I post and share things, do you guys get notifications? Yeah. Um, I don't have that Facebook attached to my phone. So I don't really know until I go onto that Facebook and check. Well, unless you're going to go onto that Facebook and check every day, you probably should have it attached. 
attached to your phone. Okay. I get notifications on all my Gmail accounts and all the Facebook pages that so and so made a comment oh, or whatever okay. each other maybe you guys know how to do it. It's been a while. Okay. But um but get the activity going, let them know how this is gonna go, go look for that document, reiterate, we don't own them, their name will never leave them. We don't want to own them. We just want the science and we want them to know that they make a difference, right? This is supposed mm -hmm. to have people really excited about what we do at the same time we get to forward the research on what's going on in the Caribbean. But you guys need your faces on there. I saw what you posted, Annabelle, but I don't think you put pictures of you two on there at all. Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to put pictures of us. Well, people don't read stuff if they don't see pictures. I, and if thought, <laughs> I mean, it has my profile picture on there, but yeah, I guess I don't really, I mean, I didn't even have a picture of Iris, but we can, we can do that. Well, I mean, getting a picture of Iris is not really a hard thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that. Um, but you do want people to be super interested in what you do, but you want them to know why you do it. Put your faces on there all the time. You can also put links to the website. You know, mm -hmm. there's pages that Sierra will be updating more, but you can look on the website and say, look, here's a manatee picture. This is where your pictures will, will show up and, you know, that kind of stuff. And I guess we should think about putting a link to Happy Will on there. But Sierra's going to be building our network page, which still says under construction, you know, putting a, a blurb about Happy Will on there and, and a link to Happy Will is a really good idea. Ted is incredibly supportive. Right, Iris? Put your smiling face on there. Uh, I kind of zoned out a little bit. I'm sorry. So if let's say somebody posts a picture that they took of um, like a new sighting, and they post it to any of the humpback whale pages. Do I do I grab that image and then just submit it to Happy Whale, or do I let them know, like, hey, I'm submitting this to Happy Whale? Um, if they're putting it on there, we're going to submit it, but you're going to work into that to make sure everybody knows that's what we're doing. Right. But but you know, it's a really positive thing. So just keep it super positive too. You know what? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I, I did make sure when I made that Facebook post to say like, oh, you know, the people before us who are working on this did a great job. Because I, I know there was an issue with that and I didn't want. No, to it's fine. It's, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, it's all about things being just you guys being involved and don't worry about anything else but that trying to send you something is there a way on here that you guys can see that i can send you a picture on facebook yeah no, no right here oh chat no all right opening facebook um, you can attach a file from your computer where is that link here because i'm not seeing it is um, it in if you open chat, up the I chat think? box it's yeah. the little like piece of paper there and just say your computer and you should be able to put something oh, oh. See that? I thought that was going to be something different. Okay. So I just want to show you something. So Annabelle, speaking to your whole idea, I don't have a picture. Now you do. Okay. So can I download this just from here? Mm -hmm. I'll be able to just wait yeah. Facebook chat, right? Or whatever else chat. So why don't you download that and take a look at it? Let's see. Click to open. Oh. Where is this opening? Oh, oh, well, Iris's eyes are closed in the sector, but. You get the point? Yeah, yes. we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, okay, so I don't have anything else to tell you guys, except thanks. And uh, December 3rd is the first date I have for you guys coming to the office. Who's coming? Okay. Oh yeah, I need to. I need to maybe update that calendar. What, what was this? I, there were second dates on there. Was it the 10th to the 11th virus? Or, um, I think it was that, weekend that of the second weekend, I think, too. Okay. Let's go look. And, and Iris, I think you want to come longer, which is fine. But mm -hmm. we got to figure out travel stuff. Are you going to mm -hmm. yeah. take a plane, take a bus, uh, teleport yourself, <laughs> you know, the glitter? You have no idea what and you guys like Star Trek? Um, yeah, I'm pretty flexible on both weekends. So 
um, whatever works. I just need to put it in. I might have to go back to New Jersey the weekend of the third because I'm not going home for Thanksgiving. I'm staying here. So I might, I have to work something out with my parents. You know, let me know. Yeah. Iris, you're welcome to come. If it's two weekends in a row, you're welcome to stay through both. Um, this mm-hmm. place work here. I'm happy to host you guys. And Sierra, what's it looking like for you? I cannot go. At all? No. Oh, I'm very disappointed. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's figure that out and make travel arrangements here and uh, tag Melissa. I don't know what her job's going to let her do either, but even if it's just the two of you, try to come together. Yeah, Iris, okay. okay. That'd be fun. Y'all can stay. That's fine too. Um, and we'll work all that out. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can. I'll get with Annabelle later and see if we can pick a date. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a lot of stuff we have to figure out anyway. Yeah. So we'll we'll arrange a yeah. meeting for next week mm-hmm. at some point. That sounds good. Get, yeah, uh, Annabelle, the catalog set up, and mm-hmm. Iris, we can catch up on a few things. You know, I think the grant's going to keep you busy for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, to what Sierra asks for and then if you come longer than a long weekend you know we'll go kayaking or to the beach or whatever <laughs> if it's a long weekend we won't be able to fit it in I don't think but we okay. will at least I mean we can get up early one morning and go for a couple hours at least do something what is what is the um the temperature there like right now is it like 50, 60s in the morning overnight it's been I don't know. I, mean, I just got home like 60 ish. Mm-hmm. And I was telling Sierra today during the day, it's like it's cool most of the day till about two o'clock. I think it was 70, 72 ish. Yeah. And, but by about three or four, it's my house is warm because right now mm-hmm. I don't have the heat or the AC on. It goes down again overnight. Yeah, it's so. just got like really cold here all of a sudden. So out here it's we have cold days but I mean I just came from Canada my definition of cold is adjusted yeah the Florida very nicely so um it doesn't matter we can still go to the beach if we really want to go in the water I mean, kayak if we feel like it you know whatever so we'll figure that out before you guys go. okay okay um sounds good yeah, we can always figure out where there's seashells and sand and water, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, this has gone on really long. We got to get going. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, good to see you, ladies, and I will catch up with you soon. Sounds good. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Alrighty, everyone, that was it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, kind of seeing how things go. Um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye.